The 4.5 usage rates have been out for a while now, but I wanted to do some more extensive testing for myself in the Abyss just so I could give my best take as to how these line up with my actual experiences. And there's definitely a lot of things that are expected, but there's quite a few surprises here as well. So let's talk about it. Welcome to Jello Impact, where I have built and tested every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. So we're going to look at different parts. We've got the usage percentage. So this is the amount of times that characters have been used on the accounts that have them. So 89% of people that had Zhongli used Zhongli. 3.8% of the people that had Kiching used Kiching. So this is of course inherently biased in the sense that even if not very many people have Chiori, she still might appear very high on the usage rate because lots of people are using her. And it goes the other way too. A lot of people are going to have Yao Yao or Layla because they're four stars. And so 4% is going to be de-inflated. We also, however, have the total amount of appearances. So out of all the Abyss clears, 75% of people use Zhongli, which is crazy because that includes people that don't have Zhongli. Um, there is the other thing to consider that this is user submitted data. And the other thing that can sit to consider that I don't hear a lot of people talk about is that this is CN usage rate. And CN use characters just a little bit differently than the West often does. CN people often often they pretty much exclusive they they they're, well I'll say this they're more prone to spending money on gacha games and whether whether that's not a good thing or a bad thing I'm not commenting it's just that if they have a, if they, if you see a novelette here you're more likely, it's more likely that they're gonna have his C1 or they're gonna have his weapon or they're gonna have an R5 battle pass that they're gonna consider Chiori with her C1, for example, or Hu Tao with her C1 Staff of Homa. This is the typical expectation for CN data. It is what it is. Uh, we'll also go over the teams. I feel like some of the top teams that people have been using. So we know that there's definitely flaws to this sort of way of doing things, but there's some interesting stuff here too. One of the things that jumps out to me right away is every single abyss, we have Zhongli being at the very top. And this abyss, it makes a lot of sense. Like you could definitely justify, hey, it's a Geo abyss with the Geo thing at the end. And Zhongli is very good for helping to deal with, with that guy. And he's also very good on the first side dealing with Capellia. But the fact is, it doesn't matter which abyss is usage rates you look at, Zhongli is very, very high. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one is again, the CN propensity is to use more invested characters. They're more likely to have a C1 or C2. And so it's easier to get away. Even if Zhongli is technically a DPS loss on the team, it's easier to get Get away with Zhongli. However, Zhongli has gotten secretly buffed over the last little while. Like he's now on Nouvellet's best team. He's one of Navia's best teammates. He's really good with Linny. He's still used very widely with Hu Tao. He's still often used with Al Haitham. Like Zhang Li is kind of, he can be the Geo flex slot for a Hyper Bloom team for the second half. Like Zhang Li is like a serious, I think a seriously underrated character by a lot of content creators, especially because a lot of content creators base results off of either speed runs or theory crafting math. Nothing wrong with speedruns or three crafting math, but the reality is as long as you can hit a certain threshold of DPS to clear a spiral abyss, min-maxing an extra five, 10 seconds, even an extra 20 seconds doesn't really matter. Imagine resetting 10 times to get 20 seconds faster or just doing one run through with Zhongli, not having to reset. That's kind of what the Zhongli difference is. And that's why I think he's so high. Farina, uh, people can hate all they want, but Farina really is the best character in Genshin Impact now. Um, people are annoyed that, you know, I always see so many comments. Oh, you know, this character is just good because of Farina. Oh, why is Farina and everything? Why is this tier list like a Farina showcase tier list? She's the best character in the game. I don't know what to tell you. She does a ridiculous amount of off field damage and does a ridiculous amount of buffing. And she has great free to play weapons. She has a great C1, which I don't even I don't even consider uh, for when I'm considering her for being the best character. But that also improves people's perception if you happen to have a C1. So yeah, Farina, really, really good. It makes sense to have her up here. She's also, um, she also is like just the bet, one of the best characters for a lot of teams. So yeah, Farina, really, really good. Novalette, the best carry in the game. This makes sense. Kazuha, um, this, this is so good for Kazuha. If we pull up example of the first half, it's just so good for Kazuha. Kazuha shreds the first chamber. He absolutely decimates the second chamber. And then he's a very good buffer for Capelli as well. The way that the enemies are lined up, 
Kazuha is just, this is just a perfect Kazuha abyss. And Kazuha still is the only character that groups the way he does. Sucrose has some grouping, but it's kind of janky. Venti has grouping for sure, but it's kind of more awkward to use. And because his buffing isn't as good, really it doesn't exist, except for the debuffing from BV and the energy regen, he doesn't bring you that much value against the Ice Twin Suite. So if you have Kazuha, you should be just bringing Kazuha. And it's like a little bit awkward to position um, Venti he's burst whereas with Kazu you just have to stand in the middle of where you want the enemies to be and he sucks them in so is perfectly it's perfectly good I also do like how all the whole top row is just Novalet's best team <laughs> that's funny to me I did want to talk a little bit about Novalet because yes Novalet is the best DPS in the game but I would like to point out to everyone and just remind everyone that Novalet has been has been given preferential treatment during the Fontaine Abysses there's a lot of enemies that just line up in a line throughout the entire through the previous abyss the one previous to that almost every single abyss except for i think one out of all of fontaine has been very good for novelette and to be fair his aoe is huge and he has good single target so you know he's still the best dps overall and that's that's my opinion but i think people's perception of him is a little bit overinflated because of how much pyro shields we've had how much exactly enemies in a line we've had and it just makes him feel even better than he already is and the reason why i say this is for people who do have novelette amazing like I, you're still gonna have a great time in the future unless there is a ton of like hydro immune enemies in the future you know you're still gonna have a great time with novelette forever but if you don't have Novalette, you don't have to feel like you need to pull Novalette because he's that far and ahead of other DPSs. Like, yes, right now, between him having, you know, just obviously being very strong, but also having access and having kind of preferential treatment by very friendly abysses to him, that he feels even better than he is. It's kind of like in the in the 3.0 abysses, I was kind of baited by this, by the way. So I'm not I'm not perfect at this, but Nilu was felt better than she was in the 3.0 abysses. And that was something that I didn't talk about as much as I wish I did. Because in 3.0 abysses, there were lots of ungroupable enemies that were pretty close together. And she basically every abyss had a side that was just extremely good for Nilu. And again, Nilu is still an extremely strong character. She's still good. Even when she is not the best, she's still very, very good. And that's what Novalet is gonna be, except that he's even stronger than Nilu was. So that's something to keep in mind. The next thing we're seeing is we're seeing that Baiju consistently this is the second time, I think, or maybe not the second time, second time overall that I'm seeing that Baiju is higher than Nahida. In the previous Abyss, Nahida was higher, but overall, but we're seeing a trend where Baiju is getting more and more popular. And obviously this makes sense because Farina is so good that if you have Baiju, you're going to use him. Um, I'm interested to compare this to this side, yeah. So Baiju, even though Nahida's percentage is a bit lower, the overall appearance rate is much lower for Baiju than Nahida because not as many people pulled Baiju. And if you did pull Baiju, it's really he's really nice on this abyss because having interruption resistance and good healing for Capella on the first side, he's good on aggravate teams, he's good on lots of different teams. He's a very comfy pick for the first side, and you easily might use Baiju on the first side, Zhongli on the second side. Defense of utility is really really nice this abyss so it makes sense that baiju is going to be higher up uh, we can also see that novelette goes down compared to overall commentary to usage rate appearance which again makes sense if you have novelette you're more likely to use them but not everyone has novelette because he is a dps and lots of people have different dps's i think the the jump that the relative jump that shangling has it shows the you know it shows the power of shangling right that because everyone has her so she's the numbers are kind of skewed against her in the usage rate but we see here that she's a bit higher um, we see Raiden pretty high. It makes sense. Raiden is good in as a she's Raiden's got so many buffs. She's good as a driver for Farina Yalan. She's good as a hyper bloom trigger. And of course, her new teams, the Chevreus, are really, really good. And she's good with Kazuha on her hyper teams. So Raiden is a character that really benefits from flexibility. I'd be interested to see what actual Raiden teams appear high. Uh, we have National. And this is this makes sense because, like I said, that's that's one that I didn't even mention, which obviously National 
original is very, very good. But Raiden has so many different teams that she doesn't appear, even though she appears pretty high in the usage rate, her actual teams don't appear very high because there's so many different teams that people are using Raiden on. What other teams are high? Uh, Novalette with Baiju. This does make sense because although his peak might be with Zhongli, you're probably using Zhongli on the second side to make it easier to deal with those Geo Shields. Hu Tao Double Hydro Zhongli is very high. That makes sense because it's a full, if we look at the second side, right? It's a full single target sweep just across the hole. So anything good with single target, like I'd expect Yoi to do really well. Um, Kazuo National makes sense. Tainari single target makes a ton of sense. Zhongli with Hyper Bloom. Navi is so good on the second side as well. This one's cool. It's the Hyper Kokomi, not Hyper Kokomi, but Driver Kokomi. This is a really, really good team. And I I think it's very interesting that Kokomi has evolved from being a support, which I've previously, I even made this mistake very recently. I am neglecting this team. I, I swear, I right now, I promise you, I will build up Kokomi properly so she does proper damage so I can properly test this team because this team is good. I have been overlooking it and I think, and I've been underrating Kokomi. I think her ability to drive this team has made me overlook it. I need to test it out and compare it to other other characters driving this. Um, another Novalette version. The Freeze. I love the Novalette Freeze version. This is so good. I love Charlotte here. Um, Alhytham. I don't know if they're they're probably using this on the second side. It doesn't have a Geo, but you can still plunge. You don't need a Geo for the second side. You can still plunge. Uh, Raiden National, Double Hydro Hyper Bloom, Zhao, Farina, and Novalette with Zhongli. Makes perfect sense. Um, Shen Yun still showing up very, very high. I think Shenyan just works with so many teams similar to Raiden that although she doesn't appear except for Zhao on this list that she just has so many different teams so she's very very flexible that way. I mean, Chiori, Navia, it makes sense because Chiori is brand new. Ido's gotten a bit of a bump. Yoimi is reasonably high. She's good on the second side, so this makes sense. I find it so interesting that Shenha is consistently above Ayaka these days. I guess it probably people are using her with Risley, who's also really high. My favorite Risley teams aren't even with Shenha, but that still makes sense. Yeah, Zhao is super good on the first side. Nilu, Linny, Ito makes sense. I think Ayato is a bit higher than usual because his AoE is really, really good and synergy with Kaz for the first side, Wanderer, Albedo, even though power crap by Chiori, it's like you already have an Albedo built, so he's still good on the second side, so why not use him? Gene is surprisingly high. Eula, this is one of Eula's better abysses. She's quite good on the first side and quite decent on the second side as well. Yeah, I actually like Eula this abyss. Now, who doesn't appear here that I've been using? I guess it pretty much shows everyone that you'd expect. I think Singcho's appearance rate is quite impressive. That's a huge jump up from the usage rate. Hydro characters are just so good, man. They're just always so good. Kuki is very high as well. I like how Chiori goes from 49% to 4.4%, whereas like Navia goes from 47 to 16. Obviously still a big jump, but it just shows you so how few people pulled for Chiori. Because this second, you know, you kind of have to look at both of these two screenshots together. Because if you just look at the second one, characters that are under pulled are going to be underrepresented. So like Risley, oh man, this just shows that Risley mains are super dedicated, right? Look at that, 23 down to 2.9. You know, it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to see like a over overall compilation of the history of usage rates. Let's put like a, take a quick look at the previous one. All the Geos have bumped up, Navia or Nahida a bit down, Baiju a little bit about the same really, Yolan about the same, Bennett about the same, I just, Kokomi with a decent jump up, Shenyun with a little jump up, Hu Tao with a little jump up, Shenha and Ayaka down a bunch, Risley about the same, Child about the same. Honestly, not that big of a change, Yai a bunch down. I think y Yai is like, like here's the thing, like I don't think that Nahida or Yai are worse this abyss, I think it's just like you could I, you could easily just chalk this up to preference. I find these interesting, right? Like I find this pretty interesting and there are a lot of runs, right? There's 170K, 170K submitted runs. Pretty, pretty sizable amount of submissions. I think the toughest part about the usage rates for me and trying to like derive a meta is that the game, you aren't squeezed enough to really squeeze out the meta of the game. So when what I mean is like when you have a competitive game and you're playing PvP, you really want to win someone makes an adaption and then you have to adapt to that adaption and then they adapt to that adaption you're kind of you're both how you both have pressure put on you to get better and better and better but with something like Genshin and if you're against PvE content like Genshin if the content was really hard and only certain things could beat it then the meta would be squeezed out of it alternatively if there were leaderboards and it mattered whether or not 
you got a minute clear versus a minute 20 clear or a 35 second clear versus a minute 30 clear 35 second clear a minute clear both count as a 36 star so there's no there's no pressure there's no squeeze to squeeze out the meta for something like a usage rate in addition a lot of people might just pick the first team they think of so like say someone's a big Nouvellet fan say someone's a big Yelan fan say someone's a big Hyperbloom fan they may just pick their favorite team go through it it works because they never had they didn't have to brain and think about what would be the best thing so they just picked their favorite team submitted it the end right like if i did this if i did if i submitted to this challenge i would put raiden or sorry i would put yeah i think i did raiden chevreuse shangling and then sara and then for the second half i just did navia chiori Bennett and Farina. Now, are these the best teams for this abyss? No, no, they're not. Like Navi is definitely excellent for the second side. Like this is definitely an excellent team. But if I was gonna do a riding team, I would be my. I'd be probably better off. Like I'd definitely be better off using a Kazua team. Um, and I've got Ben on the second side, so maybe I would adjust this and do like Shanyan, and then really I should be doing Hyper Raiden. But maybe I don't want to use Bennett because Capellia makes it harder to deal with. So maybe I want to do an Aggravate team. I don't know. Maybe I'll do Fischl, Baiju, Kazua because I just want to use Raiden because I'm a Raiden main, and then I submit this as my clear. So basically, what I'm saying is because the variety that can clear something is so large. Favoritism is going to seep into this very heavily. Now, is Novalette the best character on the first side? Yes, but say there was some sort of strat, but all the but everything else, it's just so hard to say. Have these people tested everything on their account and submitted their best thing? No, they just did the clear with their favorite characters that seemed like it was gonna be easy enough, submitted it, and bam. That's not a bad thing. What I'm just saying is that you can't take this information as reliable for a whole number of reasons that being said i think it's very interesting to talk about i think it does show us what people are getting easy clears with or what people enjoy getting clears with at least that and the my one it's, i always enjoy looking at these because my biggest takeaway is just how good zhang li is for the average person so that always amazes me so let me know your thoughts on the usage rate let me know who you cleared the abyss with and take care bye for now